Hello everyone, and welcome to your 81st Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about NS Tab View Controller and how we can use an NS Tab View Controller to switch between multiple view controllers in the same view space. So, what do I mean by that? Well, if we have, uh, let's just take our preference pane example here, we can set up this as an NS uh, Tab View Controller and we could switch between multiple toolbar items that are displaying a different view controller in the same space. So here is basically the, the content view controller of whatever our tab view controller might have. And if I change different toolbar items, we are swapping in place a different uh, view controller effectively that can be managing its own content related to whatever view we're talking about. So this is a nice way that we can separate out various view controllers uh, and NS tab view controller will actually handle a lot of the transition work that we might have to do manually, such as, you know, removing the views and adding new ones, etc. So uh, that this is one approach that we can use where we have this toolbar set up, but we can even go all the way down to having uh, no extras on the view at all. We can actually just use NS tab view controller to switch between the view controllers uh, without any other content. And we could do this manually, say if you had to switch between two view controllers in the same space, you could programmatically just swap the view in and out uh, without having anything other than the view controller being displayed. So that is uh, what we're talking about today, is NS tab view controller and uh, how it's useful. So the first thing, I'm just gonna run through the code that I've already created for this, not too much, but I've gone ahead and created a first view controller and a second view controller which are gonna serve as the first and second tabs in my uh, view controller. And uh, what we have here is a first view controller where we simply have uh, the init methods already put in for me here. And I've gone ahead and created a nib file where I'm just defining a explicit width and height uh, based on these constraints here. So this is actually not a centering constraint. These are leading and trailing top bottom constraints that are pushing the view out to be the size. Alternatively, you would manually set a height and width constraint on your view if you already knew the fixed size that you wanted. Basically, what I'm trying to do is establish a particular size that this view controller is gonna maintain because in the second view controller, which the code for that is the same here, we've just gone ahead and put the init methods in, the size of the nib is, or the, the view controller itself is a larger view. So the view size in our second view controller is gonna be larger than our first view controller and I just wanna show you how you can actually utilize this to show the content using a tab view controller. Okay, so that's all we have basically that I'm gonna talk about uh, so far that we've set up. So go ahead and set up those uh, two view controllers right now, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of this uh, window property on our app delegate, because what we're gonna do is we're going to create our own window controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this main window in the main menu nib as well. And we're gonna make a new file. We're gonna make it a Cocoa class and it's gonna be a subclass of window controller. So make sure it's a subclass of NS window controller. I'm gonna call it window controller and I'm gonna make a nib here as well. And the nib isn't really gonna do me much. Uh, we could do this programmatically if we wanted, but it just goes ahead and sets up a window for me. So it makes my life a little bit easier. All right, so now that we have that, uh, we can go ahead and set up a few things in our window controller. So um, in the window controller, we wanna specify where our a nib is going to be pulled for this window controller. And to do that, we wanna set up a init method where we call self.init and we'll do window nib name and we want the same as our window controller because this is the nib name that we're using uh, to actually load in when we're, we're trying to instantiate this window controller. All right, now that we have that, we need to set up the actual tab view controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a lazy var property here for this. And we're gonna call this uh, tab view controller. And it's going to be an NS tab view controller. And we're gonna go ahead and initialize it down here. So um, to do this, I'm gonna say uh, let tab VC gets NS tab view controller. And we wanna set up 
uh, let's just set up two different tabs for it. So we we're gonna try and put in our first view controller and our second view controller instances into this tab view controller. So to do this, we use our instance here and we can use a method on NS tab view controller called add tab view item. So each individual uh, item or individual view controller is basically going to be, um, there's a model object in there called NS tab view item. And this is basically just managing or modeling a uh, individual tab view item. So an individual view or individual item. Um, I'm basically just repeating the name of the class here, but you get the idea. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the view controllers that we want. So we can just say first view controller, and then I'm gonna just copy and paste this and put in a second view controller. All right, and with that all out of the way, I'm just going to return this tab view controller as is. So this is just gonna show you what the stock tab view controller is gonna do. And in our view to load, we're going to set our content view controller to be our tab view controller. And that's it. The last thing we need to do is actually set up an instance of this window controller here. So uh, to do that, uh, we'll do another lazy var with our window controller. And we'll call this window controller. All right, and then in our, when our application finishes launching, we're simply going to show this window. All right, and like that, we can go ahead and run our application and see what we get. So here you go, you can see uh, what we get for our application here. So by default, we kind of just get these weird module names for um, the window controllers. So you can see lesson 81 is the module or the project that I'm in and then it just tacks on the class name of each one, but you can see that it actually does work if we simply click between the, the, the tabs that NS tab view provides by default, then we can toggle between the two views. So that's pretty neat. We can see it already working out for us. So let's talk about how we can change these titles here because this is obviously not what we want for titles and changing the title is very easy. We simply specify the title inside of our view controller. So I'm going to call the title in our first view controller first. And in the second view controller, I'm just going to call it, you guessed it, second. And now if I build and run this, we can see we have two tabs, one with first, one with second, and it works just as we expect. All right, so let's talk about some other things here. Um, there's a few other properties on uh, the tab view controller that we can utilize to our benefit. And one of them is uh, changing the tab style. So if we go to tab style, there are various tab styles that we can change. And by various, I mean four. There is a segmented control on bottom, which is where the controls that you just saw would be on bottom. The default is to have them on top, which is what we just saw. There's also an option to have a toolbar and the toolbar option uh, will actually provide us with a toolbar. And if I go ahead and put that in, I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. So here you go. We can see we now have a toolbar set up that the tab view automatically inserted into the window for us, which is uh, quite convenient. It means that we didn't have to manually set one up. So if you just are gonna have a preference pane that's only gonna be content from your tab view controller, you could use this option that would automatically set up um, these, these toolbar items for you. All right, now you're asking, how do we customize these toolbar items? Well, that's actually pretty easy as well. So this comes down to our little uh, tab view item that we are managing up here. And as we can see, if I manually set some things on this, we can get it to behave just as we want. So I'm gonna set tab view one and we're gonna customize some properties on this. So the first property that we can customize is the label. And this is gonna customize the little label at the bottom of the toolbar item itself. Um, so I'll just call this first as well, just so, actually let's, um, let's call it first item. Maybe that'll just make it clear what, uh, the, where, where that label's coming from. And then if I wanna customize the image, um, I can do the image property and we'll just set some uh, custom image in here. We'll just use a system image. Uh, we can just use this image. Uh, what do I wanna use? Maybe the caution name image. And let's just go ahead and run that and see what we get. 
So as you can see here, we have our toolbar item customized with an image and the label that we specified there, which was first item. So obviously you would do the same for the second item there as well, if you were to customize that. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, that's most of the customization that we might wanna have uh, with our toolbar item. Um, one other thing I wanna show is how we can make uh, this uh, toolbar manually and programmatically switch between the view controller items. So uh, this comes back to the last tab, tab style, which is the unspecified style. And if I show unspecified, I'll just quickly run that. You can see that there's nothing other than just the view controller. So why is this useful? Well, we can now programmatically switch between the content if we wanted. So what I'm gonna do is in our window controller, I'm gonna have our window here, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and add a toolbar manually to this. And so if you were in a situation where you needed something else in the toolbar and you didn't want it just to be completely derived from uh, the toolbar in the, the tab view controller, there are actually ways that you can customize this with uh, the tool, the NS uh, tab view controller itself. It, it is, it can, does control its own, so you can actually do some subclassing in there to manage that. But let's just say for the sake of argument, you uh, just maybe had uh, two buttons that you wanted to switch between different values in, uh, you know, maybe if it's not even a toolbar at all, you just have two buttons somewhere uh, or menu items even that you just want to switch between the, the multiple view controllers in your tab view. Well, uh, we can do things like this. So um, what I'm going to do is just wire these different items up to be uh, different commands. And what I'm going to do is set this up in our window controller to toggle between different tab view items. So how do we do this? Well, we can say IV action funk uh, first VC or um, yeah, I, that's not really a good name. Uh, first press maybe. All right. And so on the first uh, value press, what we're going to do is on our tab view controller, we're going to uh, set the selected value to be um, something that we want. So we can change this by calling selected tab view item index. And this is a zero indexed uh, issue. So if you you know have two different tabs, you'd have index zero and one. And then we can do the same for a, uh, let's just call this second pressed. And we will change this to be index one. All right, so with that done, we're just gonna wire some of these actions up. And to do that, I'm gonna go click on one of these toolbar items. And um, I don't really want these uh, default items in here. Maybe I can just go ahead and delete some of these. And we'll just add some of our own. So look for a toolbar item. Uh, none of these are really good, but um, I guess I could just do that. All right, so we've got our item here. I'll go ahead and uh, let's call this first, call this second, and we'll put them into the default toolbar items. Okay, so now that we have our toolbar items set up, uh, I could have just done this with the toolbar items that we had, but uh, instead of doing that, uh, I'm gonna run you through the ringer here. So what we wanna do is set up our action on each one of these toolbar items to go through the responder chain and if it does, it's gonna hit our window controller at some point. So we can drag our action onto first responder, and I'm gonna look for first pressed. So here's first pressed. And on clicking on my second toolbar item, we're gonna wire up the action for this. Again, to the first responder, look for second pressed, and we're gonna uh, assign it to that. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and uh, test this out as we should have everything that we need. So here's our two toolbar items. Again, we you know can customize them more, but for the sake of argument, we can click on each one of them and we're going to tell the, the window controller itself to manually switch between the tabs at the indexes that we specified in those uh, two methods here. Okay, um, the last thing that I want to talk about is how we could, um, so you know we've pretty much run through most of what the tab view controller does. Tab view controller, uh, if, you know, if you want to learn more about it, you can uh, switch through some of the uh, different things here as well. And there are some you know, useful properties that you might want to know about. Uh, you can even override uh, the tab view to make a custom tab view entirely. Um, there's also these things called trans transition options. I find they don't really work that well, unfortunately, um, but 
you can specify uh, different transition options and in theory um, they should slide and change between them but I don't really find the interaction to actually be all that great but uh, you know tr try, try it out and you can find out for yourself. Um, what I'm going to do though is show you an example of subclassing an NS tab view controller. So um, if you wanted to subclass NS tab view controller you can do that and so here's my subclass here I've gone ahead and created this file and so it's called tab view controller and in view to load if you actually wanted a different subclass for your NS tab view which is you know the view that's backing uh, or being used by the view controller is uh, you can actually change the value of tab view so you can assign on the tab view controllers tab view property a different NS tab view subclass and that would change it make sure you just do that before view did load and uh, you'll be ready to go with your own tab view um, you can also override the transition uh, calls that are kind of a standard NS window or NS view controller transition where you can actually manually transition your uh, content now this implementation I'm going to just throw out right now is somewhat flawed there are uh, re-entrance issues where if you toggle between the the view uh, items multiple times quickly you're going to end up with um, multiple items added incorrectly so just keeping that in mind um, that that is an issue with this code so don't use this as uh, your perfect example but uh, this does show a very simple example at least of how we could do a manual transition uh, in our code and actually what this is going to do is basically do this little animation where it's going to remove the the view controller that i'm coming from and it's going to animate to the position of where the second view or the, you know, the new view controller is going to be and then at the end of the animation it will add in that view controller and you know you can customize this to do pretty much whatever you want to do all right um, so that's an example here that we have of uh, subclassing this and how can we utilize this well very simply we just change our instance of our NS tab view controller to be our own tab view controller and now you can see if I click on these individual tabs we're gonna get this little animation and then it's gonna present the new uh, tab view controller or the new view controller rather for that tab view item all right so that's pretty much all I have for uh, NS tab view controller um, you can check out some of the other properties on it uh, there are some relating to how it propagates titles for other view controllers and uh, things like that but uh, it's a pretty simple item and it's very powerful to use especially when you have this unspecified tab style or even with the toolbar tab style you can do a lot to really just switch between two different view controllers with ease without having to do a lot of manual boilerplate work to uh, you know add and remove your view controllers so uh, consider NS tab view controller if uh, you're ever in a situation where you have to switch between multiple views. Anyway, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you guys next week. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.